Happy Sabbath, everyone. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. The name of the sermon today is Heavenly Origins. I like that, that title because uh, where does everything come from? From heaven, from God. And I, uh, I sympathize with Andrea talking about uh, the things in, uh, in her life that have brought those, uh, those songs to us. I appreciate that, Andrea, very much. It touches me deep. I got some good news and I've got some bad news. I'll share some of the bad news first, so I want everybody to leave with a with a smile in their hearts. <laughs> now, one of my uh, verses that I, I pick on quite a bit is Jeremiah seventeen nine, and some of you know it by heart. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? When I think of uh, Peter, and he was uh, having a disagreement with Jesus about Jesus going to the cross. And it, 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 it's, it's a very strange thing for, for Jesus. Uh, he's telling Jesus, Peter's telling Jesus, you're, you're, uh, I, I forbid you, you're not going to the cross. And Jesus turns around and says, Get thee behind me, Satan. Peter was saying something that was in his heart, and he did not realize that he was being controlled. The, his very thoughts were, were, were guiding him. Now, the same thing happened in the garden with Eve. She, oh, by the way, uh, today I want to try something new. I've never done this before. I would like to invite uh, your comments. Uh, if you think that I, I have uh, shortchanged uh, something that I'm talking about, please, uh, if you'd like, interject. And uh, I want this to, to, to build up what I'm saying, not tear down what I'm saying. I, I want this to be, uh, and you have to use a microphone. Uh, and, and, I, and if you go too long, I'm gonna cut you off. <laughs> <laughs> That's so, exactly what I was going to say. <laughs> Twenty-five words or less. Okay, that's, that's why I raised my hand. Thanks, Jim. Yeah, but okay. I, I'm not going to cut you off. <laughs> I'm just talking. I, 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 it, our, um, you know, when Jesus spoke to the crowds, and I read this in the spirit of prophecy, his his vo voice was melodious. He drew the people with his very voice. There was no screaming or yelling. He did not wear his voice out on the people. I believe when he drew, when he drove the, the money changers out of the temple, he was not harsh, but they were frightened because they saw something in him that they had never seen. But I believe he's melodious when he talked. His, the Spirit of Prophecy also said his, he, he used the word pathetic. I, I, I have trouble with uh, 
This is why using the word pathetic when she talked about when Jesus spoke to the people. I think when we speak to the people, we, 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 we don't want to drive the people, we want to draw the people. I think that's most important. Um, in reading uh, uh, Jeremiah 17, 9, and thinking about our hearts, we can't trust ourselves. Uh, we want to be careful. Uh, when, when Jesus told Peter that he was going to deny him three times, what did Peter say to him? Not me. not me, not me, but what actually happened? What, what I want you to hear today is don't, do not trust, uh, what I want to hear, what I want you to hear from me today is do not trust yourself. Mm -hmm. We have got to learn to trust Christ Amen. to move us in the direction that He wants us to go. Amen. Because our pride will puff up in us and we'll go the wrong way. I know mine does. I, and I say things that I, I don't want to say. And these things that, that, that we talk about, these uh, uh, things in life that, are, that, that buffet us, that tear us down, that break us up, I believe that God uses every instance to build our characters for eternity. Amen. Yes. He wants to indwell us, but He can't indwell us until our characters are, 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 are in tune with Him. And that's where he's bringing us to. to and, and these things, these temporary, uh, uh, for the lack of a better word, temporary pains mm -hmm. are, are for, for us for eternity to build us for eternity. Amen. When we read, uh, you know, and, I, I, and one, of my, one of my favorite sayings, and maybe some of you are getting tired of hearing it, but. It's not that we're so blind is our problem. Our biggest problem is we think we can see. Amen. Uh, Amen. Romans 6.16, I believe, is telling us that we cannot make right decisions. That we can only make a decision to serve Christ. If we, there's, only, uh, there's only one other choice you can make. If you don't serve Christ... You're serving the alternative. Guess what? We don't have the power to, to choose right or wrong, but we have the power to choose who we're going to serve. Now, if Eve in the garden had chosen who she was going to serve, would she have uh, allowed Satan to lead her down the road? No. Same with Peter. If he had chosen who he was going to serve, would he have told the Lord, no, you're not going to the cross, or no, I'm not going to deny you. He, he made decisions from his mind, and he had no control. Satan controlled him. That is why Jesus said, get thee behind me. If we allow the Holy Spirit to indwell us, Satan has no claim on us, no part with us. We make right decisions because we're allowing the Holy Spirit to make the decisions for us. We, as uh, I, I like what Deborah said in the children's story, uh, why, where do we go to see what God thinks? <laughs> where do we go? To the Word. We go to the Word. Mm -hmm. We want to know what God thinks. You, you don't want to know what Ricky thinks or, or, or what uh, Satan thinks. We want to know what God thinks. We want to go in yeah. the right direction. Did somebody have their hand raised and I missed it? Okay. And the, the human race is very unique. I... I, I I see it all the time in, in the scriptures, and, and I talk about it all the time. Maybe some of you get tired of me talking about how unique we are in, in God's eyes. But when God made Adam, it says in the scripture, uh, I can't remember the, the exact verse, it's in chapter 2. Let me go to that chapter. Chapter 2 of Genesis. It says... And the Lord formed man out of the dust of the ground and the breath and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. If you go to a concordance and look up that word life, it is a masculine plural. And you could actually read that verse that God breathed into his nostrils the breath of lives. Amen. 
The whole human race was in one man at one time. Even Eve was in one man. Hallelujah. The whole human race is in this person, Adam. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's an incredible thing to think about. Well, the whole human race was always in Adam until Jesus came along and, and then we were put in Christ. Amen. The whole human race was put into Christ. Amen. It says, for God so loved the just those that loved Him back. No, the whole world. Oh, for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. That whosoever should, what is that word that, that we have a problem with? Believe. 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 Does that mean everybody's going to be saved? No. No, no because not everybody believes what the Bible says. And this, in our, go ahead, Raymond. Uh, but it does mean everybody can be saved. Yes. Very good, Raymond. Very, very good. I like that very much. Now, our text, our scripture text for today, Romans 5.18, and I know that some of the, some of you out there, this is your most favorite verse in all of Scripture. And I think that once you've got this verse down, I think this is the, one of the first verses I learned from a friend of mine when I, uh, several years ago, that I, I, it, it got drove into my mind so much that I, I love that verse. But it goes, uh, as Ray read it, Therefore, as through one man's offense, judgment came to some men. Oh, I think that's what Ray said, some men. Now, all men. And the same is, and the result, in, 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 on the other side of the coin, it says, resulting in, con it says, came to all men, resulting in condemnation, even so, through one man's righteous act, the free gift. Does anybody understand what free gift is? The free gift came to all men, resulting in justification of life. There, that word only occurs twice in all of Scripture. Justification means you are acquitted. God looks at every person on planet Earth as though they have never sinned because of this one verse. Praise the Lord. That's an incredible verse to think about. Does that mean everybody's going to be in heaven? I ask that question. No, because not everybody believes this verse. You have been pardoned. You either accept the pardon or you don't. In the Romans 6.16 is that verse that I talked about a few minutes ago. Who, who is who you... Let's read that verse. I'll mess it up trying to quote it. It says, Do you know, do you not know that to whom you present your slaves, yourselves slaves to obey, you are that one slave whom you obey, whether of sin leading to death or obedience leading to righteousness. We want to choose the latter, the obedience leading to righteousness. Amen. I mean, why, why not? Why wouldn't we want to love a God who, who loved us and created us so He could indwell us? I love, Ray brought that out in Sabbath school. So God can indwell us. Yeah. And as Raymond said, and then Ray said, Ray said back, tabernacle with us. God wants to tabernacle with us. So when He tabernacles with us, we can't have any sin in us. That's why He is cleansing us now. Amen. You can't cleanse yourself. I got news for you. If you try to cleanse yourself, you're going to drive yourself insane. <laughs> God is the only one that can cleanse you. And He's doing that every day. When you have those problems that be buffet you, that beset you, that drag you down, that those, are, those are the problems that are, are building your character. Some of you have great characters. And some of us have not so great characters. Some of us are just characters. <laughs> Thank you, Deborah. <laughs> that, that's what I love about this church is, is I, I can say things and, and, and if, if y'all y'all straighten me out. I know. <laughs> you know, being the, the lay pastor of this church it, it, it is a privilege. Being the head elder of this church was a privilege, and now doing this is is I, I I don't do anything different than when I was head elder. I, I don't know if y'all noticed or not, but anyway. <laughs> I don't have a halo or anything. Or, anyway, I, I love y'all. I love each one of you. And I, 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 my biggest prayer is to spend a, a million years with each one of you when we get to heaven. Amen. And then I'm going to start over again. Amen. And, 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 because we've got forever. 
We serve a great, big, wonderful God who's always loving and He's always in control. Amen. And He's always in tomorrow. We don't have to worry about tomorrow. He's already there waiting on us. Amen. I think that that's an incredible Amen. thing to think yes. about, that God is already there. We don't have to worry about tomorrow. No. I mean, i got things in my mind. If I allow them, they will, they will drive me to my knees today. And they should. But I should not be worried about tomorrow because God has got it in control. And if, he, and, and, if, and if He chooses to take me home, what better time will that be for me? Because in the next second, I'll see Him coming in the clouds of glory. I, will, I don't want to be scared when I die. I, I don't know if, as, as I can live up to that at standing in this right here, right now. But when it's time for me, God is going to give me that strength. I, 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 I have the faith that He will give me the strength. I don't have it. But God has it Amen. to give me. And he's got, he's got it to give each one of you. Amen. When you when when it's time to go, let's let's go with thanksgiving and praise. Mm. Amen. To love your neighbor, I'm not trying to change gears. I, I just forgot to say something. To love your neighbor, you have to love God first. Amen. We have to have Him in our hearts. God is waiting anxiously to spend time with each one of us. He is sitting there and He's waiting. He can't wait for us to, to, to talk to Him, to, to ask Him, and, and to fellowship with Him. He is there 24-7, anytime He's waiting for us. He wants to do eternal things in us. That's why, why would he, what, what other reason would He send His Son, Jesus Christ? There's no other reason. I mean, that, that, that's madness. He wants to, to be part of our lives. Yes. The Holy Spirit, He's trying to allow us to hear Him. We want to hear the call of God on our life. We want to know which way to go and what He wants us to do. Now I've got, uh, I've got one thing I would like to read to you. And then I'll, I'll close. This comes from Christian experience and teachings of Ellen White. Oh, let us live holy for the Lord and show by a well-ordered life and godly conversation that we have been with Jesus and are His meek and lowly followers. We must work while the day lasts. For when the dark night of trouble and anguish comes, it will be late to work for God. Jesus in His holy temple and will now accept our... Yes, let me start that over. Jesus is in His holy temple and will now accept our sacrifices, our prayers, and our confessions of faults and sins and will pardon all the transgressions of Israel that they may be blotted out because before He leaves the sanctuary. And that's most important. When Jesus leaves the sanctuary, then they who are holy and righteous will be holy and righteous still. For all their sins will be blotted out. And they will be sealed with the seal of the living God. But those that are unjust and filthy will be unjust and filthy still. For then there will be no priest in the sanctuary to offer up their sacrifices, their confessions, and their prayers before the Father's throne. Therefore, what is done to rescue souls from the coming storm of wrath must be done before Jesus leaves the most holy place of the heavenly sanctuary. Amen. And our closing song is 205.
says, there are there those loved ones who have long been parted will all meet that day. The tears of those who are broken hearted will be wiped away. Amen. The character is not shown by one good deed or even one bad one. The character is shown by the way we speak and act day after day. Amen. 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 Father, we thank you so much for, for everything. We thank you for your salvation in Jesus. We thank you for the thoughts we think. We thank you for the lives we live. And Father, we want to be used by you to show others who Jesus is. Father, we give you permission to do whatever it takes in our lives to bring us to where we need to be so you can come back to take us home. Mm. Father, we want to come home, but we also want our families and our friends to know you also. Father, we're ready to work for you. I pray that you would fill our hearts to overflowing, that they would overflow to those around us. We thank you and we praise you because you are so worthy of our thanks and praise. And Father, we thank you so much for hearing our prayers and answering our prayers. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.